guys? It's your boy Matt back again on WellTube today from South Coast Wedding Academy in Houston, Texas. Today we're doing D1.1, 3G, 7018, all the way out. Stick with us, we're about to get started here real soon. Alright guys, like I said in the intro, we're doing a uh, D1.1, 3G test today. Stick all the way out. We're using 3 8 plates for our bevels, quarter inch backing strip, quarter by one backing bar. And if you notice the soapstone marks on the front of the coupon here, proper planning prevents bad performance, okay? So when you're going into a test, do a little bit of research, find out where those bends are gonna be coming from, because it's a good idea to not put a start and a stop where you're gonna be bending it. So plan ahead, I mark my plate out, one inch off of center is where the half inch side bends are gonna take place. So I, got, I marked it out half inch on each side of our center mark. So I know to plan ahead. So if I'm running, I'm running 330 second electrodes, so I'm, I'm not gonna be able to get crazy far with them. So if I'm getting real short, I'm gonna have to stop in the middle, even if I have half of electrode left, just to make sure I'm not gonna have to stop anywhere that that test might take place. So do a little bit of research when you go into a testing facility, no matter what the code might be that you're gonna be working on, know where those bends or where those nick breaks are gonna take place lay it out on your coupon so during the process you know that you're not going to leave yourself short or put a bad tie and get a tiny spot of porosity or whatnot in there where they're going to be actually doing the test make sure you plan out your starts and stops accordingly one other thing i wanted to talk about today brand new hood about to drop on weldlife.com so keep your eyes open for it right a few weeks to a month out okay chop pipe liner with the leather top it's new fresh on the market so still in development actually. So just keep your eyes open for it and use uh, Warrior Welding TX and get yourself 10% off once it drops. All right guys, before we get started, there's a few things when you guys go to tack these up, if you're in school or what, whatever the case may be, there's a few things you really wanna pay attention to when getting this set up and getting ready to weld, okay? First thing is on the inside of your bevel here, you wanna make sure there's no gap between your top plate and your backing bar. You want a nice tight fit when I tack this up, since we're using a quarter inch on the back, I put one on either side as well to make sure it was nice and flat. No gap, super tight. Um, <clears throat> another thing is, there's a backing strip here for a reason, okay? Light up on the backing strip at the bottom and on the backing strip on the top. It's so you don't have any low spots, really at where you're terminating your weld, you don't wanna have a low spot here. So always weld through past your plates and end on your backing bar, okay? Just little simple things, but just a few things to really pay attention to. Another thing is, put a nice wel uh, weld on the back side, about an inch or so, because it's gonna wanna draw forward. Put a lot of weld on one side, it's gonna wanna pull forward. So just put, I put about an inch long weld right in the center on the back, just cheap insurance to try to keep it as flat as we can, okay? Alrighty, so for today's demo, I'm using a 332nd electrode, running off the Miller XMT350 Field Pro, 85 amps, got a nice comfortable level, tacked it over to the side so I have something to prop on, get myself nice and comfortable. Again, you don't when you're stick welding, you really don't want to be out here freehanding it, just trying to you know fake it in there. Just try to get comfortable, prop on something, find something to get comfortable with. Okay, when we put our root pass in, it's very very important that you don't have a convex bead. Okay, you want to almost keep all your passes concave, so it's easy to clean those toes out. If you have a real concave bead in there, especially on the root, it's going to be very hard to make sure you get all the trash out on the toes. So you really want to try to wash up on those walls a little bit and make sure you're not undercutting in the wall, okay? All right, so I got my bead in. It's up right to the top of that second area where the second bend's gonna take place, so I'm safe. Go ahead and tie in. Whenever you're tying in, you want to strike your arc ahead of where you're going, okay? You want to drag from the top down loop around our crater and continue on. So you weld through your arc strike, okay? Never want to strike down on top of the weld you just did. Strike ahead, loop around your crater, and continue on, okay? Really hold those toes. Make sure you're not undercutting on the sides. Give you a little one count on each side, quick across the middle. And again, use that backup strip, weld past your bevels. Make sure it stays nice and full all the way across the test coupon.
All right, so we got our root in there, okay? The first pass. First pass, just make sure all three surfaces are, are uh, fused together. So you want the backing strip and both bevel pieces, make sure all three of those surfaces are nice and fused. So for my second pass, my first fill pass, so you can call it a hot pass, I suppose. And do a small weave over top of it. Again, make sure you're holding the toes. It's very important that you don't have a, con a convex bead here. You wanna make sure you're washing up on the walls, make it easy to clean all that trash out, okay? Just tracing that leading edge. We're not jumping out of the puddle. Just trace that leading edge. One, 1,000, one, 1,000, one, 1,000, one, 1,000, one, 1,000. One, one thousand, so on. Again, stopping past our final, our second test area. Only have a few inches to go, so I'm gonna use the burnt rod that I used the last time to finish out my bead. Your welding instructor will appreciate you getting the most out of your materials as well, so. Don't just throw half rods in the bucket. Use them when you can, just like right now is a perfect example. Weld past your bevels. Keep going up on that strip. Make sure it's nice and full. Now we got our root in, we got our hot pass in, or our first fill pass. I'll do one more single pass weave. Just try to get as much material in there, try to build it out. Probably have to stop in the middle now since we're going wider. We're not gonna get as much real estate out of our Electro. We're gonna not be able to get as far. So I'm gonna plan on stopping in the middle, do a tie in there just to make sure I avoid that area, okay? And same rules apply, hold the toes for a good one count. Make sure you're keeping it nice and full, no undercut. Okay, like I said, I was gonna try to stop in between those marks. Stopped right here, I'm about a half inch shy of my test zone. So perfect place to tie in, cheap insurance. Okay, that's all it is, cheap insurance. Sure, you can have a tie in in a test area, but why risk it? You know, this test is for your job, it's to pay your bills, put food on your table. If you don't have to risk it, you don't have to. Just mark where you know, so you know where you need to be. And make sure your tie ins are in a good spot. And as I'm coming up on this fill pass here, I'm just watching that side of my bevel, keep it about a sixteenth of an inch to the top so I keep it uniform the whole way up. I don't want to fill it out. And the last thing you want to do is burn out over that edge before you cap. You want that nice straight edge of your bevel as your guidelines for when you're capping. Keep it just below that and then you know when you cap it, you'll be within the allowable tolerance. I have, I'm using the weld tube auto lens. So it's super clear, that's why I can flip my hood down and while I'm buffing. Sure, I'm wearing my safety glasses, but it still isn't fun if you get slag stuck to your face. So use it as a face shield, flip your hood down, super clear, I can see everything. So just so you know, using that weld tube auto lens. Always look where you're going, look how full it is. Make sure you try to keep everything even. You don't want one side full, the other side low. Again, just staying just below flush. I want to leave that bevel edge for my cap pass so I have a real nice guideline to follow. Nice and easy, stringer bead, just doing a little side to side manipulation. Just gives me kind of a tempo to follow and then just trying to go straight up, keeping your travel speed the same. It's always easier for me to put, put a little motion on it. That looks perfect. We're just, just below flush. We'll have a nice, nice solid line to follow there. Go ahead and put one in the middle, then one up the left side, and then we'll go ahead and do our cap. I'm just gonna follow the toe of my last bead here. 
that's going to be the center line for my following bead. So I'm going to put, run this stringer bead halfway over this one, halfway over that one, and always keeping an eye on that left side though to make sure I leave enough real estate to get a third pass in there though. Same thing on this last pass, again, just make sure you're leaving that edge. I'm going to bring it up as close to that edge as I can without burning it off, just to keep those nice straight lines, okay? You don't want a cap that's an inch wider than your, your bevel, so you want to make sure you got a good guide. So we welded that all the way out, root all the way out, filled it up. We haven't stopped, it's about 25 minutes of solid welding there. Um, so I'm gonna give it a minute, let it cool off before, it, not cool off completely, but let, give it five, 10 minutes, cool off before you do your cap. It just eliminates, you know, possibility of undercutting and stuff like that when it's super hot, just makes it easier to carry that metal. So give it a minute and then we'll throw that cap on it. So this is barely wrapping over the outside edge of that bevel, about a 16th. Just important that you consume the bevel. You don't need to be way out on top of the parent material. Just important that you burn that bevel edge in. Minimal undercut, if any. Take your time. If you go too fast, you're definitely going to undercut it. So take your time. Let it fill up behind you. Go right up the toe of that bead. Probably be a four bead cap. All right, just keep following the toe of that previous bead. Like I said, it's gonna be a four bead cap. So it's our third one, we got two more to go. And we'll wrap this guy up. Just take your time, breathe, be comfortable. Don't worry about it dripping on you. It's not gonna fall, trust me. It wants to be there. The weld does not wanna drip on you. Just take your time. Now one more pass and we'll be all buttoned up. Same thing as the left side, you just want to wrap over that bevel edge, just about a sixteenth. Just consume that bevel. Don't be way out on top of your parent metal. You want to be right into that bevel zone, so just consume that edge and that's more than enough. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. Again, weldlife.com. Keep your eyes peeled for the new chopped pipe liner with the leather top, as well as the gear that we always have on the site. Again, Warrior Welding TX, save yourself 10%. We'll see you next time. Thanks again.